Jack, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thanks for having me. Um, right after finishing your Periscope call. Now, right, down, right now, Twitter stock is down about 13%. You've laid out a turnaround plan, but mm -hmm. Wall Street doesn't seem to think that it's working fast enough. How do you react to the stock? Well, we've been spending on we've been spending most of our time on on what we can actually control, and we're fixing a bunch of the fundamentals uh, of both the product and also the company. Uh, we put a structure in place recently that uh, really merges product engineering and design, so we can increase our shipping cadence, and we can really deliver on the five priorities we laid out in the last earnings call. Uh, we're focused on live as an umbrella of what we think Twitter does best. But to serve that well, we have to make the product a whole lot simpler. We have to make it a whole lot more accessible. We have a leadership position in live video that we want to continue to strengthen. We think we can do a lot more for creators and influencers on the platform, and we have some of the best in the world using Twitter every single day. And we think we have, we have a lot more to do around safety, giving people better controls around their experience so they can block, mute, and report. Uh, and our developer ecosystem is extremely, extremely strong with over 2 billion active devices on Fabric. There's only 2.4 billion active devices in the world. So we, uh, we've been looking at the fundamentals and the foundation of both the product and the experience, and now we're finally in a position where we can move much faster and we're shipping every week. So what do you have to say to investors? Do you think the stock reaction has it wrong? I, I think, you know, we're, we're focused on the right things. We've never had more focus as a company, as a development team, and, uh, and we're engineering what we believe to be the best experience out there um, around life and around what's happening now. And, you know, I want to make sure that Twitter is the place that you check the first thing to start your day. Uh, it'll tell you exactly what's happening in the world, what's most important, what matters, and, uh, and that's what we're driving towards, and that's what we're focused on. You've talked a lot about the refinements you made to the platform. Mm -hmm. You added 5 million users, but are you disappointed that you haven't been adding more? You know, we, uh, we did have a lot to fix on the, on the fundamentals, uh, and we are doing that work, and we're moving really, really fast. We're doing a lot of small, simple changes in a very fast way, and those will add up to big uh, engagement. And we think we can continue to provide value faster than anyone else, uh, especially in terms of live news, entertainment, and conversation. That's where our strength is, and that's entirely what we're focused on. As a user, I have to say that it seems like the changes you've been making have been very small, and they've made the service better, but they haven't really been big changes. Why aren't you changing Twitter more? We've made some pretty big changes over the past six months. I mean, Moments is a, is a good example of that um, everything that we're doing around Periscope uh, has been a big shift. Uh, the refined timeline uh, is something that you know, we've been meaning to do for quite some time, and we're seeing some pretty significant positive signals out of that. More tweets, more replies, more retweets, uh, more likes, obviously. Uh, and we're seeing less than 2% opt-out. So people are actually loving the experience, and, and we're actually seeing those in the numbers. So we're really happy with the changes that we're making. But in order to make some of those bigger shifts, we also have to make sure that the foundation and the fundamentals of the service are sound. And we've been spending the past six months making sure that that is the case, uh, and we're in a really, really good position to move faster now. You've said that you want Twitter to be able to reach everyone on the planet. But at the growth rate that we saw this quarter, you're not on track to reach 500 million users anytime soon. What's going to change that? Our total audience is, is massive. We have over 800 million people uh, experiencing tweets on, on a regular basis. And that's just immense. And you can't, see, you can't go to any media. You can't see any t television screen or outdoor space or billboard without seeing a hashtag or an app. That's all Twitter. And we see our tweets everywhere. And we want to make sure that that continues to strengthen and improve. And also, we're adding more expressiveness to every tweet. We just recently added the ability to see a live periscope uh, in a tweet. And that's just phenomenal. You can really see the world uh, in a very live and raw and direct and authentic way. And that is uniquely Twitter. You've been at Twitter now, returning to Twitter now as CEO for the past nine months. What are the changes that you're seeing that that show that Twitter is a better, stronger company now than it was nine years, nine months ago. We're focused on more collaboration. We're focused on shipping faster. We're focused on ship, shipping better experience, and we're really focused on some of the things that we've we know are confusing people, and that are inhibiting a lot of usage. Uh, Twitter is phenomenal at providing a sense of a shared experience, and you know we think the best way to get Twitter and to understand the power of Twitter. Uh, is really through a live event. Uh, and we're making investments here. The NFL deal is one such example 
where we have people tweeting about games all the time. And the simple question is, what if the game was actually on the same screen as the tweets? And it's not just about football. It's not just about sports. We can do this around live news. We can do this around elections. We can do this around debates uh, and entertainment as well. So you know, people watch live events with Twitter, and we think we can make that even better and easier for people to access. In terms of that NFL deal, can you tell me how many new users, even ballpark, you expect this to add to Twitter service and how much this could boost Twitter's revenue? We're, you know, we're, we're really looking at where the world is going. The world is going around video, and we think this is a great opportunity for our advertisers and also for people who are interested in, in the NFL and, and football. But the amazing thing is certainly it, it makes our experience a whole lot better, but it's the easiest way to get into what makes Twitter great. It's the easiest way to see this really unique, differentiated voice around people who have these deep insights around a game you're watching. We benefit massively from the fact that you're meeting new people on Twitter. It's not the people in your address book. It's not the people on your phone already. It's people that you don't know, but they're really interesting. They're providing you very unique insight. And as, as people continue to see that, it will naturally grow, and, and that will take care of itself. Well, so, but you didn't answer my question, though. Is, is the NFL deal going to be what meaningfully accelerates Twitter's growth? Are we going to see massive acceleration of these user numbers over the next couple quarters? We're always looking for opportunities to refine the experience and make it easier, and there's going to be a series of things that continue to show people why Twitter is valuable. You referenced live, um, and you also referenced Facebook, sort of subtly, by talking about how different that service is. Mm -hmm. Facebook is now going after live with its live streaming. Mm -hmm. It's inherently built into the Facebook app, unlike Periscope, which is separate. They also are going after commentary about live events, also messaging, and also commerce, areas where Twitter has been investing. How do you deal with this competition when Facebook is such a bigger base? We've always seen competition over our 10 years, and we believe we have a leadership position in live. Live is not just about live streaming, but it's around these live events. And we think Twitter is better positioned than anyone else out there because of the people on it who are tweeting every single day about what they're seeing, about what they're thinking, and about what's happening right now. And because we're public, because we're distributed, because we're real time, and because we're simple, that allows people to see the world faster than any other platform, and that is still true today. But Facebook has a lot more information about targeting ads to those viewers watching live. Are you saying that you think that your live video is better positioned than Facebook's? I, you know, we've always had an interest graph. We've always been able to quickly tell not just who's in your address, but what you're interested in, what you care about, what matters to you, what matters most. Uh, and that signal is extremely rich, so we can provide fundamentally better experiences because they match your interests, because we can connect you with people who share that interest because you can actually have a, same, a conversation on the exact same platform as well. Uh, and that's unique and that's very rare and, and we still lead that. Let's talk about the advertising softness that you saw. How concerned are you that you haven't been able to grow ad numbers as much as everyone has expected? Well, we saw uh, a pretty massive shift uh, to video. Uh, and uh, you know the, the, the brand advertising growth wasn't what we expected, but it was because of the shift to video. We've been working on uh, improving our video experience on Twitter for the past two years. And we're see actually seeing the benefits of that. It's our fastest growing uh, product and experience. And it's something that you know people expect more and more on the platform. And as we set out at the beginning of the year, live video is a really important priority for us. It's number two. Uh, and it's something that we think we, we do have a leadership position in uh, and will continue to make the best experience out there. Uh, live is more valuable than anything else. Uh, and when you pair it with video and when you pair it with, with Periscope uh, and all the conversation around it, we think we have a very, very strong offering that meets where people are going, both advertisers and also consumers. But that didn't answer my question, though, about what's going on with advertising. Do you think that the softness you're seeing in advertising is an industry-wide trend, the reluctance to add more dollars to a certain category, or do you think it's Twitter-specific? Do you think advertisers want to see how video performs before they spend more on video ads on Twitter? Well, I can't, I can't speak for our peers, but we are seeing a lot of activity on video, uh, and there's a lot of strength on video. Brand advertisers are going directly to it, uh, and individuals are expecting more of it. It's a very easy way 
uh, to see a, a service, a brand, a product, uh, and, uh, and we think there's a lot of opportunity there for us. Do you think that one of the reasons you're seeing softness is you have so much more competition now, not just from YouTube <laughs> and Facebook, but also from the likes of Snapchat? Uh, we've again, we've always had competition, and we'll continue to have competition. We're we're focused on building the best experience for Twitter, and again, that's really around that live aspect, that conversation. Uh, we're seeing a lot of benefit also from customer service, which has always been a big part of the platform for over nine years, where companies can advertise, but they can actually talk to their customers as well, and the customers can talk back and actually handle um, some customer service issues in real time right away. This is an area that Twitter's been focused on for a long time. It's mm -hmm. also a new area of focus for Facebook with mm -hmm. Messenger. Mm -hmm. What do you make of Facebook jumping into these areas where you've been for a while? Well, again, we, we've been doing this for, uh, for a while, and we think we, we have uh, first uh, a brand recognition that this is a place to get really human-focused customer service and a human touch around that. We've had some of the biggest brands in the world take to it, and, and not just from a pure customer service standpoint, but looking as a channel uh, to sell more as well. Um, so to improve the experience that a customer has around their brand uh, and to, allow, to enable the customer to actually give a rating on how the brand is doing and, and what they want to see more of uh, using in the industry standard techniques. On the earnings call just now, Anthony Noto spoke about interest in M&A. What can we expect in terms of M&A for Twitter moving forward? We've benefited massively from M&A in the past, uh, and the company's been phenomenal at recognizing talent before the world really gets a chance to see it. So two examples of this are Vine and Periscope. A uh, company made the acquisition before each of those products launched. They were just phenomenal teams and phenomenal products, and we'll continue to look for great teams and great products that add uh, to uh, those five priorities that we set forth at the beginning of the year. What about Twitter's role as an independent company? Um, looking at the stock's reaction today as you continue to iterate and, and build on what you've been doing and in your game plan, mm -hmm. do you think that it would be beneficial for Twitter to be out of the spotlight as a division of a larger company? Well, the board always has a fiduciary right to answer that question, and we presented them a 2016 plan around our five priorities and what we intend to do. Uh, and they're going to hold us accountable to that. But I'm focused on making sure that we're executing against those five priorities uh, and that we continue to show strength and to do that uh, as fast as possible. And again, our shipping cadence has improved. Week over week, we're shipping something meaningful to the experience uh, that benefits everyone using the platform. And do you see signs that the concerns that Wall Street has about the advertising softness and the, and that, and the uh, user number growth not being quite fast enough, do you think these concerns are overblown based on what you're seeing right now in this month in, in Q2? We're focused on building the best experience possible and really focused on what, what sets Twitter apart from everyone else, which is showing what is happening in the world right now. And we think that's unique, uh, and we think that really takes care of every other concern. We're focused on building uh, and what we can actually control, which is that experience we're providing to people. Has anyone tried to buy Twitter lately? <laughs> Any incoming calls? <laughs> You're splitting your time between here and Square. I know it's very convenient. Square is just across the street. But do you think that Twitter is getting everything it needs from you? Yeah, I, I've set up a structure where I can spend uh, you know, all the time necessary to make sure that we're, we're on the right track, we're executing. Uh, you know, we start the week off as a leadership team, and we focus on everything that happened in the past week. We look at the entire business uh, line by line. Uh, and everything that we're doing around the product, and we have a discussion. Uh, and we have checkpoints on Wednesday and Friday uh, throughout the week. And the rest of my time is really spent making sure that we're, we're building the right things, that they feel great, and also on recruiting uh, and making sure that we have the best talent uh, in the company and continue to build on that. There's been a lot of criticism about the board. <clears throat> you've replaced two board members, and you've said there's more to come. What are you doing specifically to address this need for diversity, which is something you've spoken about a lot? I mean, you replaced two white men with one white man who hasn't tweeted and one white woman. What's, what's the plan going forward? Well, diversity continues to be something that's really important to us as a company and certainly on our board. Uh, and you will definitely see announcements throughout the year uh, to bring more diversity and perspective to the board. Uh, we're focused on adding more public company experience. We're focused on adding more international policy uh, experience. Uh, and, uh, and a lot more media experience as well. So we're, we'll continue to make additions to the board um, that make sure that we're, we're, you know, we're, we're pushing in those roles, 
uh, but we're also adding diverse perspective to the board. I know we're out of time, but a final question about your perspective running this company. What's your biggest frustration about misunderstandings about Twitter and what this company is doing and, and what the road is ahead? Uh, you know, I, I think um, that the company has just been phenomenal at influencing culture and influencing the world. And uh, its influence continues to grow. Uh, the audience continues to grow. As we find uh, areas in the product that we can remove some of the more confusing aspects, and we know that inhibiting usage, it just unlocks new behavior. Uh, and we're really, really excited about that. Um, and it's, you know, I don't think there's any other place in the world where you can see what's happening in the world faster than Twitter. And not just see what's happening, but get a really unique perspective on it, get a really unique voice. And, and that hasn't been replaced no matter how hard others have tried. And do you think that the, the investing community doesn't appreciate that or value that? I think they appreciate it. I mean, there's always been a lot of expectation around what we can do as a company and, uh, and where we can go, and we're going to deliver on it. Great. Perfect note to end on. Jack Dorsey, thanks so much. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.